First of all, always a pleasure to sit down with Good you. Good to see you, Steve. Um, I, your resume, I, I have a bunch of things I want to talk to you about. Uh -oh. Your resume is what I call incredible. Uh, when people want to talk about the certain movies in the uh, 90s, do more people want to talk about The Rock, Con Air, or Armageddon? Uh, I think all of the above. They really do. The Rock is a favorite. A lot of people, Armageddon is fantastic. Then they talk about Pearl Harbor. They, I mean, a lot of my Micah Bay films that I've been lucky enough to work with him on are topics of conversation no matter where I go. Well, the thing about those is that, that was a run of like every year one of these, it was just it was just a crazy run. And also, right. I mean, some of these are Criterion movies now, too. Did you ever think when you were making Armageddon it was going to be a Criterion movie? Never, never. You know, I, it was just fun entertainment and we got really lucky to get Bruce and Michael together and they, they hit it off. They made a terrific film. I agree with that statement. Um, jumping into why I get to talk to you today, uh, this has been a project that's been in, I called, well, what everyone says, development hell for forever. Uh, at what point, and how many years ago did you realize we are now on the precipice of what the technology can finally do? Well, I think over the last three, four years, you finally could see when you saw some of the de-aging that they were doing that it's possible. But Ang didn't want to do de-aging. He wanted to create a whole digital human being, which he did, uh, based on will. And I was always skeptical. Aang wasn't even sure himself he could pull it off, but he's a very confident man, until we did a test. Before we started to film, we did a test. We took a scene up from Bad Boys in the car where the two guys are talking to each other. So you have Martin talking to Will. And what they did, one of the shots of Will, while they're talking, they put a digital Will in there. And the rest of the scene is a real Will. I could not find the digital Will. And I said, I knew we had it. They showed that test today, this yeah, morning, before right, we did this junket. Right. And it was after they said one of those shots was a digital will, and I yeah. said, what the hell are you talking about? I used a different word, but right. I'm, I'm trying to be PG in this one. Right. But I couldn't believe it. Did you ever figure out which one it was? Uh, uh, eventually, when they showed me, I didn't know myself. They it, pointed it out to me. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, one of the things, I, I, I saw the high frame rate with The Hobbit, and I saw the high frame rate with Billy Lynn, but I thought that the 3D high frame rate in this was by a mile better. Just, it looked fantastic. Um, what what was is there like a hurdle that all of a sudden was overcome or just my eyes have gotten used to it? No, it's 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 Ang. It's it's learning from Billy Lynn and watching The Hobbit and seeing how he could make everything better. And he figured it out. He knew you couldn't very, wear any makeup. He knew all these every little thing shows. You have to be so careful what people are wearing, what's in the background. Every little dot on somebody's face will show up. So it takes a long time and to, to make sure everything's perfect before we start filming. One of the things I thought with, with, with The Hobbit was that you could tell that people were on a sound stage. When in this movie, where the, when they're in, I forget, it's Columbia or... Cartagena. Yeah, when, when, uh, but when they're in certain locations, I feel like I'm in a documentary. It, it's it, amazing, isn't it? it it's, it's truly incredible. How have you looked at this technology and said, what it might be good for with other movies or certain genres, or are you started looking at that kind of stuff? Absolutely. It just it, what has to happen is it is the cameras have to come down in size. They're so big. The three D camera had special rigs made. It was very difficult. We had to have bungee cords to help the the handheld work because the cameras are so big and bulky and and heavy. But you know what? When we started at the back of the camera, there were twenty wires going into it. By the time we finished, there were six. That's crazy. So as we were do, as we were making the movie the technology kept advancing and will keep advancing. So well, hopefully other filmmakers will embrace this technology and start making movies this way. How, what is the smallest camera you could use on this that was effective? I, I would, well, it depends. If it was the 3D rig, it was about this big. Okay, so that's not terrible. But normally it was this big. Right, no, I'm just trying to think because I think that, you know, documentaries using this 3D high frame rate, right. I mean, that's the future. Oh, no kidding. It's, and I'm just wondering what Well, that would be easier because the, usually the, the, the individual is stationary. So it, it'd be much different unless you're a documentary or following somebody around. But it still can be done. It's going to be, it, it will happen. Uh, I'm always curious about the editing room because right. that's the final rewrite. What did you learn when you got in the editing room maybe that you weren't expecting? Uh, and what made you, like, excited? Well, I think any time you use digital, digital world, any time the visual effects start coming in, because usually you're working with a stuntman or a double or something else, and when they started putting in the real Will and the digital Will, it was spectacular. So before, we were just watching the movie with Will playing Junior with a head, head rig on until they replaced it. So when, as it started evolving and you start getting more shots of Junior, that was great. 
Uh, did you end up having a way longer first cut and like a lot of deleted scenes, or was it pretty close? There always uh, a long first cut, no matter what movie you work on. It's always long, and slowly as you pare it down, and audience tells you what they like and what they don't like, we get to it to the length it is now. Uh, what did you end up? I know every movie nowadays, every movie does test screenings and friends and family screenings. Right. What did you learn from those early screenings that impacted the finished film? Uh, we embellished the ending. We changed the ending of the movie. Uh, so that is different because the audience wanted more of, more of the two of them together. And so we accommodated them. And it's a much different ending. I am very curious. Oh, off camera, I need to now know what the... I will tell you off the, camera. Yeah, I was going to say what the other... I'm, yeah. I'm trying to think right now yeah. about uh, that. Um, before I run out of time, uh, the other day I actually sat down with Eddie Murphy and he told me that after coming to America 2, he's doing Beverly Hills Cop 4. God bless him. Right. He's always wanted to do it. It's just right. we could never get anybody else to do it with him. I'm, I'm talking about the studios. They were, you know, it's old material. What do we want to do it? Until Eddie did Dolomite. And people said, wow, he's fantastic because people haven't seen him. He's been semi-retired this whole time, you know, raising kids and doing that kind of thing, being, being a dad. So when he, come, when he came back and they started seeing what he was doing, everybody got real excited about making it. Because I've been pleading with everybody to make another Beverly Hills Cop for years. Uh, one of the, listen, Eddie famously says he likes sitting on the couch. Right. And he told me that he's viewing this chapter of his life as like a bookend. He right. wants to make a few comedies, then if he wants to sit on the couch, he's fine. Um, what, uh, he said to me he's gonna do it after coming to America too. Do you have a script and a filmmaker? We have a script which, which we're redoing. Uh, and no filmmaker yet. Do you know when you might be in pre-production on it, or is it one of these things that's a fast-moving train? I couldn't tell you when we're in pre-production on it because it, we got to get the script right. As soon as we get that right, then we'll, we'll be in production. Sure. Um, you have produced an awful lot of TV. Right. Uh, what do you... What's the next? Are you looking? What's the next thing that you're looking at? Because the abundance right now of channels and content that's out there is is immense. I'm just curious what you're looking at for as your company for the future. Well, we're we, most of our stuff is with network television. Uh, we have a show called Lucifer, which is now on Netflix. So we're kind of moving a little bit into streaming. We're still going to do still do network because we love network television, and we're going to do something for Quibi. So we're, good, we're expanding in all the forms of, of digital entertainment.